Welcome to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Monday, October 24th, at 6 o'clock, I'm going to join Councilwoman at Large Patricia Perkins Augusti at a domestic violence seminar. It will be hosted at the Elizabeth Public Library, which is located at 11 South Broad Street. And if you want more information, please call 908-354-6060. If you need any more information concerning this event or any other events in our city, please call our public information office at 908-820-4124. And please stay with us after these messages, where I'm going to be back with Dr. Norma Bow talking about Be the Change. Why do we like it here? Let's just say the reasons are diverse. Kane University. Welcome back to our city, where I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Norma Bow. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me about yourself first here. You're, you've been at Kane for how long and would you, what's your education, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let me tell you. Um, so I'm a nurse by background. Uh, I have degrees in nursing and community health, health education masters, and my PhD is in community health policy. And I've been teaching here at Kane for 17 years. I teach courses such as Death and Perspective, which has a really long waiting list um, to get in. Why? And because <laughs> everyone's dying to get into the death class. <laughs> oh, there you go. Good answer. Uh, it's a really, really great experiential learning class uh, where we go on several field trips and um, really. What, the cemeteries? We go to cemeteries. Oh, we go I see an, an autopsy. We go to a funeral home. We see a cremation. We do a lot of different experiential learning activities in that class. I, I teach mental health. A class that I would take. Oh, you would love this class, Mayor. Really? Yeah, you should take the class. Everyone's grieving. You'd be surprised, know, especially our students. When I walk into a room of new students um, and I ask them how many of them know someone who's died, 100% raise their hand. Sure. When I say how many of you know someone who's committed suicide, 50%. And then I go through a series of questions, but the last one is always how many of you know someone who's been murdered? And three quarters of the class raise their hand. So our young people have a lot of grief, and this is a course that addresses that. I teach mental health, and I teach health and social activism, and I really love my work here at Kane. Good for you. Wow. I didn't know that was such a varied background when I asked that yeah, question. That's see? terrific. Now tell us about Be the Change. What is it, and how did you get it started? Well, Be the Change was actually started by a group of students, Mayor, that they were very tired of meeting about problems. They were very tired of talking about problems. They wanted to go out into the world and make change. They wanted to do something that would Our society, make though, just talks about problems, right? They just yeah. talk and, and meeting after meeting, and they were tired of it. So our very first project was with 32 students, and we went over to Father Hudson House here in Elizabeth on West Jersey Avenue. Uh, there was Hart. Yeah, in Dehart Place. And um, there were three rooms being used as storage rooms. And that's one of the places I take the students on field trips for class. Uh, one of the fine arts students, her name is Vanessa Russo, she looked at these three spaces and said, you know, Dr. Bo, we could turn these into really beautiful spaces for the patients and for the staff. And so on a holiday weekend, 30 students showed up and we got paint donated and rollers donated and we completely transformed the space with some furniture from Ikea and you know donations otherwise. We made a, a craft room, a sitting room and a dining area where patients could have their own meal with their family where they wouldn't have to be in the general dining room. And from there, there was no stopping these students. Our very next project was a complete makeover of the Isaiah House in East Orange. So just picture a house with 12 bedrooms, six bathrooms, two living rooms, with throwaway girls and a throwaway house. Is the Isaiah House a hospice or? No, is Isaiah mission? House is a teen homeless shelter. A teen homeless shelter. Yeah, and um, it, Sears gave us 80 gallons of paint. Students looked for months for a couple of months for furniture and other things to replace the broken things that were there. 101 Kane University students showed up to that project. 101? We did a, a complete makeover. But the best part of that story, Mayor, is that nine of those 12 girls ended up here as Kane University students. Because once we got the nine project Nine of the 12 done, that were in the homeless teen shelter. Yes, yes. We've had two graduate. We have two more graduating in May. 
And um, it's been extraordinary. We started bringing them to homecoming. We brought them to theater events on campus. I would bring them to the open houses. And we started to understand that there's a, actually a Dyfus little loophole that if you're accepted to college, that you don't age out at 18, you age out at 21 or 22 once you've finished your education. We've been to the Gulf five times after the BP oil spill. We've been to Joplin, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We've done projects in New Hampshire, Vermont, 16 states. But most of our work is centered right here in the local urban area. We've done projects in Elizabeth. We've done a lot of projects in Newark. Who comes up with the projects, Dr. Moore? Most of it is student driven. They have a problem. Let me give you an example. So a lot of our students go through the Newark Penn Station to come uh, to school, as they do also from the Elizabeth Station. And they see a lot of homelessness. So one of them came to me and said, what can we do about all these homeless folks? And we came up with Operation Peanut Butter and Jelly to feed the homeless. And it happens every week right in Henningsville. You know, when Hall. I looked at my notes and I said, I hear Operation PB&J yes. is one of your biggest projects. What is it? We do it I, every week. I didn't think week. it stood for peanut butter and jelly. I <laughs> thought it might, but you confirmed it. Yes. So go ahead. It, it happens every week. Uh, people donate um, 10 loaves of bread. We need four jars of peanut butter, four jars of jelly. We get brown bags, sandwich bags, fruit, bags of chips, anything, granola bars. And we make over 125 uh, sandwiches and bags and we bring them to Newark Penn Station. We've also fed the homeless at, a, at the Elizabeth Station. And that's just something that a student saw, wanted to do something to address the issue. and. And that project was born. We've been doing it every week for so, eight years. So the, all, the hard materials are donated? Yeah. Most of what we do is sweat equity and donations. And who makes the calls for the donations? The students themselves? Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we all we make a materials list. Some things we do have to purchase. And we have um, some donated funds for that. But uh, most everything is sweat equity and donations. So how many, how, you mentioned 101 and then you mentioned 36. Yeah. How many members does the organization require? Oh, I was for? hoping you'd ask me that question. Um, we have over 950 members now on our Facebook page. And we're expecting you to join too. Sure. Right on Facebook. I'm not too good Either at sweat equity these days <laughs> at my age. but That's okay. Just having you there would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, so our Facebook page is Be the Change Kane University. And I would say out of that 950, one third are active students. They're undergraduate or graduate students currently enrolled at Kane. One third are alumni like yourself and one third are community partners. We love to be the manpower, for instance, for other people's projects. Um, right before everything happened in Elizabeth with the pipe bombs, the day before, we were the manpower for the Elizabeth Coalition to house the homeless for their uh, Homeless Family Fund Day. Um, I think we had 50 volunteers there that day to help run that program. So whenever another agency has something they want to see done, we really enjoy being the manpower for that. So it's not all students? It's not all students, no. Anybody can join Be The Change. And Be The Change was responsible for getting Mr. Parker, one of the gentlemen who was homeless, a place immediately in the aftermath. Yeah. Um, so uh, honestly, I was up almost the entire night that Sunday night when uh, the well, bombs so were. I. I know. I saw you. <laughs> I, I saw you giving interview after interview. And I really appreciated that mayor because it kept all of us really informed. And um, I was watching NJTV and uh, I watched until the producer's cell phone died, you know, about four in the morning. And my concern was for our students that come through that train station. Um, and of course, all the residents in Elizabeth. The very next morning after only getting a couple hours sleep, and I'm sure you had even less than that. Um, one hour. One hour. Uh, I noticed someone had reported that there were two homeless men who had moved the bombs from one place to another where it was a little safer. And I've since then seen that They didn't spot. know it was a bomb when they moved it, though. Yeah, well, um, I think Ivan may have had some inclination. He thought, he thought it was not a good package when he opened right. it. Right. He's a Navy vet, so he had some idea. But when I think about Lee Parker taking that bag and moving it to that grassy area about a thousand feet away out of harm's way and then going to get the police um, the next morning they were just reporting them as homeless men and our be the change group myself i felt like we needed to find out who they were i mean i did a lot of that reporting that way because that's the way it was described to of me course. when they walked into police headquarters 
they gave an address, but the one didn't live. Mr. Parker was just kind of there for he short. moved. He moved those bombs and he then did. was yeah. there till about four in the morning and then slept in an abandoned building. Yeah, I didn't know. I did, we didn't know what happened. I personally didn't know what happened to him that entire evening, but the, uh, the bombs were left right near an SUV. Yes. So then the robots had to move them away from the SUV. Yeah. But what those two gentlemen did saved probably hundreds of lives. I agree. Yeah. And so that next morning when I heard that it was two homeless men. And also they were lucky. They got very lucky. The yeah. minute the robot touched that bag, I watched it blow up. I know you were there. Well, it, it, it wasn't the exact moment. They were trying to cut the wire to uh, dismantle it, which didn't work. So from a viewer's perspective, it seemed like just yeah, yeah, a minute. It's, yeah, yeah. It's quick. You know, so, so, so I was determined to find out who these men were. The sad part is if they would have blown up with the bomb, they would have been then guilty. Can you imagine? Yeah, they would have been guilty of and making we, it. And we, and, have and we would never have found have the perpetrator. Because they would have been, exactly. Wow. They, they, would have, they would have been blown up and everyone would have assumed, the media and everyone else, that they made it. You know, Which and when I... Sad. Very sad. Yeah. I asked Lee... Uh, afterwards I said to him you know what what do you think about the fact that you move the bomb and nothing happened and then when the robot touched the bomb it blew up and he said to me I must have been standing in the circle of God's grace and when I think about what could have happened like yeah like I said, said at a press that day these men walk on the fringe of society yet that evening they were walking with angels absolutely uh, totally agree for them to carry that thing but, but so you saw this on the news yes and you said hey this organization can help yes and so we were determined to get the names you were the first one yeah yes. the, the names were easy but we didn't know where they were yeah we you know, found which, them we're good at you finding did. you were the first group to find them <laughs> we're very we good could at have finding found them, people but in in the immediate 24 hours uh, no offense to these two gentlemen, that wasn't the priority. Of course. Yeah, so. No, and, and it, you know, that was the beauty of it. You all were very busy doing what you needed to do, um, and we were able and you to... you stepped in, yeah, really. Yeah, we which did. Which is terrific. These are the, this is what this group does. It's really incredible. Someday I'm going to invite you to just even look at our homicide maps from Newark. We homicide map all of the city, and then we pick the areas that need the most help to do our projects. And that'll be for a different day. But um, with Lee and Ivan, we were determined to find them. But I should back up and say that Monday, we also delivered ice cream cakes to the Linden PD, the Elizabeth PD, and the Elizabeth Fire Department. I missed out on the ice cream I know cakes. you did, but they, they got big ice cream cakes that said thank you from Be The Change. Really? Because what they did was just so heroic. They never told me about the ice cream cakes. I have a letter from the Linden PD. Thanking, thanking us. You? Yes. <laughs> yes. We were determined to get the names of the homeless uh, men. Of course, we found out that Ivan wasn't homeless. He's a Navy yeah, vet. He has Navy services. Vet, he has a, but he was years ago. Yes. He struggled years ago. Yeah. I think a lot of Americans are struggling. Yeah. And, you know, the way that Lee describes it, he's really been an out-of-work forklift operator since um, Hurricane Sandy. I think, oh, I think Wakefern offered him a job. Yes, they did. Yeah. ShopRite Wakefern right. offered him a job. He accepted the job, and he starts training this week. That's terrific. Yeah. All because you picked up a backpack. All because of We're that. We're going to do a couple of commercials. Can you stay with us? I sure can. Please stay with us after these messages. I'll be back with Dr. Bo. We're an American original. Dependable. Historic. Nuanced. With all the comforts of home, even when you're just visiting. So we're celebrating for all that we've left untouched and all that we've changed. A place where the past meets the future. So consider this your invitation. We've been celebrating here in Elizabeth for 350 years, and we're just getting started. Welcome back to our city where I'm joined by Dr. Norma Bowe of Be The Change here at Kane University. Dr. Bowe, it's great to be with you again after the break. Um, you also were spending time with Mr. Parker and Mr. White and you talked about their reaction as well. Uh, tell us about their reaction, because you didn't only find them a place to live, the one gentleman, but you helped them eat as well. Yes. Um, the night after all of this happened, a group of us took um, Lee Parker out for a steak dinner. At that point, we couldn't find Ivan. He had kind of walked off, uh, but we took um, 
uh, Lee out very locally to Algarve restaurant. We got him a big steak. He had garlic shrimp. He had a big piece of chocolate cake. And then the next day we really got to work. I took him grocery shopping. A bunch of us donated money to take him shopping and we bought him almost $200 worth of groceries. He hadn't been in a grocery store to shop in over a year. I read your quote in the paper yeah. about that. Yeah. It was over a year. Um, after that, he started getting all these interviews. The New York Times came, you know. Um, he was invited into New York City to the BBC. And uh, some of our members felt like he should have nice clothes. He'd been wearing the Be the Change t-shirt that we had given him for, I think, two straight days. So again, we took him shopping. And we got him shirt, tie, the, the very shirt and tie that he wore at the ceremony that you did at for City him. Hall. At City Hall. We bought for him. Um, and, you know, so we, we made sure he had the things like that that he needed. One of my students, her name is Sophia, donated a mountain bike. She had a bicycle that she wasn't using, and it was almost brand new. And when Lee saw the mountain bike, he almost cried. He has wheels now. He can get to work. He can get around. Um, we don't think of those things as something important, but this student stepped up and knew it would be. So not only were your students creative and you were creative, but two people changed the lives of many residents in Elizabeth by saving them, but you helped change their two lives. And I'm just curious to know, are you still in touch with these two guys? Oh, all the time. I talk yeah. to them at least every other day just to see what's still up, what they still need. We were uh, really encouraging Lee through that whole interview process with Wakefern. Uh, we're looking for permanent housing. Uh, right now he's in temporary housing. We're looking for a permanent apartment for him. Um, and we see ourselves as continuing with them until they The Coalition's also... working with them on getting a bank account? Oh yeah, the Elizabeth Coalition to House the Homeless is an amazing organization. And they're working with him, particularly on the monies that came from the GoFundMe account, um, setting them up with bank accounts, um, helping Lee get permanent housing. They have been so involved with, with Lee right from this. You you were in city start. council chambers, right? I we, sure I Yeah, sure I saw was. you sitting in the front row. Yes. And it was, uh, it was an interesting evening to see all the people applaud them. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, the night we took Lee for dinner, news was still, you know, circulating. Not well, everyone had Well, you had them had out the, before the news media knew their names. Exactly. We were in the, in the restaurant, and I made an announcement. Um, one of our members made an announcement that we had a hero out to dinner and everyone um, gave them a standing ovation and applause. And that's what I think has been so remarkable. You mm -hmm. know, there's a bias against homelessness. There's a stigma, there's this way of thinking, but anybody mayor can be a hero. And I think these two oh. really proved that to us. They did. So switching gears a little bit, you were talking about one of your classes, but I understand that some, most of your classes are very populated. Yeah, they're very yeah. full. <laughs> yeah, so you get 30 to 35 students per class then. I do, yeah. And especially in that death and perspective class, I, I overload the students that really need to be there. You know, we have a variety of reasons why people are grieving, and I try to and make who, sure. Who, what major would take, is it, or is it strictly oh, an elective? I get, I get majors from all over the, the university, yeah. So because I teach a public administration course, and probably 98% of my students are public or criminal justice majors. Yes, I get some of those majors as well. But I wanted to ask you a question. Sure. How do you, I know you're a Kane graduate, I know you're a Kane professor here too. Um, what do you think? Uh, I'm an adjunct professor. You're an adjunct professor. I don't professor. want to insult any of the full professors. So. <laughs> Make sure Not at a, all. Make sure that's a clarification. <laughs> There'll be somebody watching oh, who no. will say, hey, Mary. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> you're a teacher. How did your cane education influence your sense of purpose and the dedication that you have to the community? Well, it's a really good question because I haven't given it a lot of thought because I spent a lot of time here at Kane University. My undergrad is in economics and my graduate degree is in public administration. So... I used both of those degrees in different ways the because they were years apart before I got them. The economics degree helped prepared me for a business growth where I worked in the steamship business and other things. And then I didn't go back to school until I was elected to the city council. And then I said, you know, I like this government stuff. Let me go back. And Dr. Letterman and Dr. Uh, was starting a uh, public administration major here, and they were accredited. Actually, we were accredited here before Rutgers, wow. which is always a good thing. That's a great thing. So... We were nationally accredited, and I signed up. I was one of the earliest students in the master's program of public administration. Enjoyed it thoroughly. Did much better grade-wise in graduate degree than I did in undergraduate degree, probably because I wanted it more. Yeah. 
And then you take that knowledge and that information that you learn here and you somehow apply it to everyday life, whether you're on the city council or as I've been the mayor for the last 24 years. And it's, it's probably like teaching and the subtle comments of learning. Like I learn from the students every day. Oh, yeah. I, you know, you think the students learn from me, but I learn from them every, every day. Well There's not said. a class goes by that I'm not learning from the class I'm teaching. Absolutely. Uh, so, Agreed. And that's exciting because that keeps you in touch with what real society is. I mean, I have 30 to 35 years on most students, and frankly, that's exciting that I can still learn from them. And I'm sure you apply that to your work in the city. You do, because, yeah. you know, I, I, you ask your students questions every day before the semester starts. The question I ask my students is, how many of you read a newspaper every day? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it used to, there's not a student in my class who reads a newspaper. Yeah. They do not get news from a newspaper. So they're getting news from Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, and mostly word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, and you can encompass all of that social media into word of mouth if you want to put an umbrella over it. So what's in newspapers is not driving public opinion. Yeah. And so I need to learn by that because... I used to wake up when I first became the mayor hoping my name was in the paper. I now wake up hoping my name is not in the paper yeah. because it doesn't do anything in driving public opinion. Yeah. And in my job, you have to be able to know public opinion. Of course. So I, I, I've answered your question in a very long way, yes. but I think it's a mutual learning experience between, Absolutely. and it's an ongoing learning experience. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, Back to your classes, because yes. they're classes I've never taken and probably never will, unfortunately, <laughs> only because of time constraints. But do other students tell other students about these classes? Or? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because if I saw that class in the syllabus, I think I would skip it. <laughs> but there has to be a draw. Whether it's, it's amazing. You. The depth class is so much fun. We do a yeah. lot. It's it an really oxymoron, is. isn't it? Well, you know, we're all going to die. And our yeah. students really, I mean, you know this, a lot of them are first-generation college students. A lot of them are taking care of their parents and grandparents and have been raised by grandparents. So, so a book was written about this Yes, class. a book was written. It's called The Death Class, A True Story About Life. And you know what, Mayor? It's going to be an NBC TV series. Are you in it? I'm not in it. Jennifer Carpenter is playing me in, this, in the series. And this is a documentary, you think? It's a NBC drama. So it's going to be an ongoing... <laughs> so it's not going to be a one-shot deal. No. The book is called The Death Class, A Sto uh, True Story About Life by Erica Hayasaki, who was an L.A. Times journalist. She followed me around for a whole year to write the book about me and the class and some of the stories of the students who were in the class at that time. And it's an extraordinary book. It really is. And it just got the attention of the NBC producers, and they signed, they signed up, they signed it on. Are you a consultant in any yes, way? Yes, I'm you a are. creative consultant for You're the show. So when they, roll the, the pilot. when they roll the credits, yes. we're going to see your name? <laughs> yes. Are we going to see any of the students' names as they roll the I credits? I hope so, yes, absolutely. I'm so proud of my students. We have the best students here. We really do. I know, but so do you run into favorites? Do you, how do you deal with that? You gotta oh, have, you I would never claim it, right? to have favorites. Of course not. Because None then of they us would do. fight with each other. Yeah. But I have witnessed some of the most beautiful, compassionate, kind, and wise moments in my classes. Our students are extraordinary, and they want their education. They're working hard. Some of them work two, three jobs to come here and, and, and learn. And so I think it's a little different than some of the schools where mommy and daddy pay their way. And, you know, it's sort of the more typical college experience. Our students, you know, they expect an education when they come through these doors. You know, it's interesting you say that because I had to deal with my dad, who I was a first-generation college student. My dad was a letter carrier. My mom a stay-at-home mom. My dad said, if you go to college and you finish in four years, I'll pay for it. But I was a bartender in the <laughs> 70s, and I attended a bar here in the Jersey Shore, and I didn't finish in four years. So after two years, I was bouncing around, always had money in my pocket because I was a bartender. So then I wanted to go back to school because I got a job at Sealand, and my father said to me, well, then you'll pay me back for the first two years that I paid because you didn't finish in four, and then you'll use the money you earned to finish your education. So it was a really interesting lesson that I yes. learned early in life that I made a deal with my father. I broke it 
So therefore, I had to pay him back. Yeah, and I bet you really appreciated your education when well, you were paying for it. Yeah, now that I have a daughter, I give her the try to give her the same lessons. There I don't, you I don't go. know whether it's sinking in or not, but I try I'm to. I'm sure her the same. it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I want to thank you for all the work you did with uh, Mr. Parker and Mr. Lee because I didn't meet them until that Tuesday evening, uh, only because there was a lot of other things going on. I tried to call them in between all the other stuff we were dealing with, and I couldn't yeah. get a hold of them naturally no of course not but and you, were uh, very busy. you stepped up and the coalition stepped up and the gofundme page stepped up and those three efforts really made a difference in uh in the lives of these two gentlemen. And I really think the United States was watching. I started getting emails from people well, from other Well, we were the epicenter places. of the world for you a 24-hour You really were, period. and I think that Elizabeth just really all pulled together. I think everyone should be very proud of the efforts, you know, made by the, the two PDs, Elizabeth and Lyndon, and, and also the fire department and the Union County Bomb Squad. And I think it was a very proud moment for the city. And, uh, well, Dr. Ball, uh, yeah, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us on thank the show you. and for all of your efforts on Be the Change. And look forward to, I'm going to sign up and tell my staff, get me on the Facebook page. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much. For Dr. Norma Bow and Be the Change here at Kane University, I'm Chris Bolwage. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. some of the finest teachers in the country. And then they graduate. Kane University.